we're going to chapter 6 accounting depreciation we're talking about depreciation is simply talking about the loss of an asset most of the time businesses they need to invest in capital goods and these capital goods could be equipment technology machinery so all these things they need to be with the business for as long as possible but each year that passes by the value starts reducing that is what the position is called to get it. So the loss in value of non-point assets brings about deposition. So this deposition has to be recorded based on our cruel matching concept. So deposition will be part of our expense. So whatever provision you make for deposition, it goes to your statement of profit or loss. The, the asset itself, the value of that asset in that year you bought it, it goes into the statement of financial position as non-point assets. How much again? The value of the assets, the historic cost. Non-current asset is the. This is an asset that stays into the business for as long as possible. Okay. So, as soon as you need to, as soon as you purchase an asset, aside land, which appreciates. It's uh, debit side. As soon as you purchase an asset, you have to start making provision for the position for such assets. Okay. So the provision for the position will be charged. There are different ways you could charge provision for depreciation. First, it has to be monthly done. The second point is, if you are charging provision for depreciation, if you are charging depreciation, either you charge it at the beginning of the year, before the asset is being sold, disposed, or you wait till the end of it to, to charge depreciation at the disposal, at when you are disposing it. You don't charge depreciation when you, are, when you, you purchase the asset, and still charge the position when you are disposing it. No, you need not charge it at the beginning or at the end. We're going to get that and get there anyway. So mostly, because you have purchased an asset, you need to de you need to charge depreciation, which means provision for depreciation. So each month that passes by, it will be accumulated. So that accumulated depreciation goes to your statement of profit or loss, our statement of financial position. But the position charged for that asset for that month goes to your statement of financial or statement of profit or loss. The accumulated goes to your statement of financial position. So that is what you take away from the historic cost to get your carrying value. Are you with me? Asset to be charged. So the historic cost, the accumulated depreciation, you take it away from the historic cost. That gives your carrying value for the subsequent year. Is it clear? So what are the is it clear, please? Yeah, it's part of it. You find it. So go to causes of deposition. For causes of deposition, what are the reasons why there is deposition? The first one, the condition of an asset progressively getting worse over a period of time. It's an asset, just like the laptop. Over time, the situation, you know, gets worse. It's not going to be new anymore. So that means it's depreciating. Another point is technical obsolescence. It's outdated. So there's depreciation because of what the asset is outdated. There are new versions for them. So if there are new version, that means the old version is depreciating. The third point, reduction of natural resources. Here we're talking about resources needed, depletion of resources. Resources are used up. As a result of that, we cannot find a way to maintain or to improve that asset. So if we cannot improve that asset, it will depreciate. Do you get the point here? We are unable to, you know, Part of our, when we talk about capital expenditure, improving the assets. So because we are unable to improve that asset, then it will depreciate. It will wear and tear. That is depreciation. Clear. And the last one, the passage of time. As the year goes by, the value of the asset will come down. That is depreciation. Clear. Is it clear, please? Good. So we'll go down. Reason for charging depreciation. Are you there? The, the charging of depreciation for each accounting period that benefits from, from the use of non coin assets is an example of application of accrual concept. I told you already that we charge depreciation because of the accrual matching concept, which means we have to classify expenses at that time we purchase it. No. Okay. So, reason for charging depreciation, I told I said the first one, it is part of the accrual principle, which is matching, accrual matching concept. You charge depreciation based on the value, the the year or the time you purchase it. So the part of the cost of an unconnected asset is matched to the revenue generated from the use of that asset. So this is a laptop or this is an equipment. So you continue to use that equipment. The value of the position should be charged based on 
what you are using it for. Do you get it? This asset is being used. You are using that asset. The cost of it must be charged, must go in line with the amount of money it's generating. You are using it to make money. So that means you have to charge the position based on the money you make from it. Do you get it or not? The part of the cost of a non-connect asset is matched to the revenue generated from that asset. You have purchased an equipment. The equipment is used to generate revenue, yes or no? So the cost charge on the position should be part of the revenue generated. But it has nothing to do with the revenue you're making. The revenue you make is through what? Through the machinery. What if I'm using a laptop? Yeah, you make money from the laptop. Yeah. When you're charging the position, it has to go with the value, the amount of money generated from that laptop. So if I make a ledger, I will add the deposition with the revenue made. If you are making a ledger, mm -hmm. it, it, as soon as there is deposition, we have the cost account and the deposition account. Mm -hmm. In your cost account, you debit the historic cost. The historic cost. Yes. And in your deposition, provision for deposition account, you credit the value of deposition. So mm -hmm. you are making, the cost is 10,000. Then it is expected to depreciate by 5%. So 5%, so 5 of 10,000 goes to your deposition account. Where do you get the 10,000 from? From the value of the assets. So that's what I mean by the part of the cost of a non coin asset is matched to the revenue generated. Okay. Clear. Therefore, the position is a non-cash transaction. So you won't find, you won't have the figure of the position. You don't have the amount in hand, but it has to be deducted. So there is no cash transaction between the business and any other person. There is no transaction. But what we only know is that we are making a provision for the position based on the fact that there is an asset that has been purchased. So the transaction goes with the asset that is purchased. So you are just taking that big figure away from that asset. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? Okay, we'll go to methods of disposition. So we have straight line method, we have reducing balance method and revaluation. For straight line method, we're going to find the cost and the residual value with the economic life. The economic life is the same as the useful life. Are you with me? So for depreciation per year, it is cost minus residual value divided by the economic life. So if the, if the asset is expected to be used for five years, that means the economic life is five years. The residual value is the amount you're going to sell the asset after the economic life. So how much you bought it for and how much you selling it for? The amount that is expected to sell it. You're expected to sell it is your residual value. So you, like if I buy property now, so I will say how much I will sell it for like in the five years. After the position, it's, it's, you get a value. Mm -hmm. So the value you are selling it, minus the amount you bought it, yeah. based on the years it has spent, gives you the depreciation. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Is it clear? So residual value is the amount of the asset, the amount the asset will be sold after its economic life. And then accumulated the depreciation, what? And the position per year cost my so here the two times the position rate. Yeah. So you have to do this equation first to get the second equation. Yeah, but mostly if you are not given the if you're not given the depreciation value, you could still get it. Mm. For each month. Okay. Each month. Yes. So if you are if you are told to calculate for three months, it means three over twelve multiplied by the num the amount of the value of that asset. So uh, what is accumulated depreciation? I wrote? This refers to the accumulated reduction in the value of an asset over time. So your accumulated depreciation is this, uh, the accumulated figure of each depreciation charged. Okay. Year one, 10,000. Year two, 10,000. That means year one, year two, you have 20,000. These are what we call accumulated depreciation. This value is what you take away from the historic value to give you your carrying value. Okay. So for carrying value, it is the original cost less the accumulated depreciation. Clear. Is it clear, please? Mm -hmm. So look at uh, the work example here. The cost of the asset is 55,000. The cost of the asset is 55,000. Depreciation will be charged after the first year, which is 10,000. The accumulated depreciation is still 10,000, because that is still the first year. So your carrying value will be accumulated depreciation minus cost. Accumulated depreciation minus cost gives us, cost minus accumulated depreciation gives us our carrying amount for each year. I think it's clear. 
So we scroll down. We go to the reducing balance method. For the reducing balance method, we have a fixed percentage charge on the position. So the percentage charge on the position will be on the carrying value. That's the only thing here. Listen, please. For residual value, it's not the same as straight line method. For the straight line method, we don't have a fixed percentage. Mm -hmm. But for the disimbalance method, we have a fixed percentage charge on the carrying value. Mm -hmm. A fixed percentage charge on the carrying value. That's the disimbalance method. Okay. Are you with me? Okay. Is it clear? So look at here. We have the same for the same cost, which is fifty-five thousand. Twenty percent is charge. Twenty percent of fifty-five thousand gives us eleven thousand. Eleven thousand minus fifty-five thousand is the carrying value for the next year. So you charge the position on the carrying value. Clear? Is it clear, please? Then we have the revaluation. For revaluation, here you have the historic cost and any way, any value that you are improving, any amount you're using improving the value of that asset minus the amount you're going to sell it at the end of the lifespan. That gives you a depreciation. Mm -hmm. So evaluation is the startup capital, the startup, uh, the startup cost of that asset minus the value the asset will be sold after, the exp after its expiration. Times depreciation. Yeah, not times. Gives you the value for depreciation. Okay. For evaluation, the cost of that asset Minus the amount you want to sell the asset gives you your depreciation. That's it. That's it. Is it clear? Now go to calculating depreciation when asset is purchased or sold. During the year. Are you there? Yeah. So there are rules that need to be put into consideration when calculating depreciation. The first one, a full year depreciation is charged. A full year depreciation is charged. Now, the first one, depreciation is calculated in a monthly basis. So, which means, like I said earlier, if you are calculating for depreciation, it has to be done monthly. So, if your, uh, what's it called, additional information says depreciation is charged for three months, it means three over 12 multiplied by the historic cost. Which is? Which, whatever they give to you. Okay. Then, another point is, a full year depreciation is charged in the year of purchase and not, not in the year of disposal. So, if you are charging your full depreciation, uh, is it that you charge it at the year of purchase? Then, if you are charging it at the year of purchase, you won't charge it at the end of your sales when you are selling it, when you are disposing of. Or, you wait until the year of disposal. Then, you won't charge at the year of purchase. When you purchase an asset, a non point asset, the start year, you could charge the position fully. But if you have charged the position fully for the start here, it means at the year of disposal, you won't charge the position. Or you don't charge the position at the beginning of the year, you charge it at the end or at the time of disposal. You have the year you purchase the asset, and you have the year you're going to dispose the asset. Yes or no? So if you are charging the position, either you charge it at the year of purchase. Or you charge it at the year of disposal. You tell me one benefit why at the start of the year? No, it's the same. It's still gonna give you the same figure. So you buy a property and then you charge this depreciation. Depreciation at the beginning. So you can see how much you lose. It's still gonna give you the same figure. And Charging at the beginning or at the end, it's gonna give you the same figure. The market rises and it gives, it's really high. Market, it doesn't affect you. Depreciation, it's the assets continue to fall. The asset continues to fall. Oh, but Mr. What are we talking about? Give me examples of the assets. That are kind of Equipment. Machinery. machinery, yeah. The machinery you bought one year ago is not going to have the same value as this year. It's not going to have the same value. Yeah, yes, yeah. Whatever equipment. In as much as it's a non point asset. One of the reasons is what we just talked about. No resources to improve it. Mm -hmm. Or passage of time. It's outdated, so there's no point in proving it because it's outdated. New ones are coming out, mm -hmm. new new versions are coming out. So why do you stay with that? You have to sell it off, but you have to charge the position either at the beginning or at the end, at the year which you are disposing it. But what if it does not lose no value? There's no way it won't because it's wear and tear. 
What is it? It's a holding asset. Holding. Asset that does not lose value. The only asset that doesn't lose value is land. What about... Like imagine we're talking about gold. We don't talk about that here. We're talking about things that the business is using for its operation. But it's a business, it's a mining operation company. The, the, the extract. Mm -hmm. The land they extracted from depreciates if you don't know. Yeah, because you got a lot here. Yeah. So, as soon as, listen, land does not depreciate, land does not depreciate doesn't mean land doesn't depreciate. Land that is being extracted, uh, is where the actual resources are being extracted will depreciate. Okay. Clear. So we go to ledger accounts for non coin assets and provision for depreciation. For the ledger accounts, as soon as an asset is purchased, you have to open a cost account. A full year depreciation is charged in the year of the possible. Amount. I said that already. I said either you charge at the beginning or you charge at the year end. So ledger accounts for non coin assets and provision for depreciation. As soon as you purchase an asset, you ensure you open a cost account, which will be your financial, which will be in your financial position, similar to financial position. Then you make a provision for depreciation. So your cost account will have a debit balance, and your provision for depreciation will have a credit balance, which is expenses. This is it here. Do you understand the point here? No. When you, have, you have to open a ledger for non coin assets, right? Mm -hmm. So when you are opening a ledger for non coin assets, as soon as you are opening a ledger for a non coin asset, it is, a, it is a single entry. It has to be double entry. So that asset that you, you've opened the account for will have a double entry, which is the provision for depreciation. So equipment is purchased. It has a debit balance for cost account. Then provision for depreciation will be made for that equipment that was purchased, it will have a credit balance, okay, clear? And that goes to your statement of profit. Listen, you purchase, you purchase an equipment. The equipment you purchased will have a cost account, which is a debit entry. Then the position has to be charged on that equipment. The division charge on that equipment is an expenses. It has a credit entry, which is your statement of profit or loss. And your cost will have will go to your statement of profit or statement of financial position. We'll do examples and we'll see. Yes. Is it clear? Yeah. So why didn't you talk about perversion or depreciation account where the accumulated depreciation is recorded? What? Hold on, please. Why didn't you only work with that maybe? Yeah. 